There's a romanticism about the thought of being able to take renewable energy, convert that renewable energy into hydrogen. Tomorrow's vehicles could be driving totally zero emission free. That's a major step forward. Hydrogenx is a uh, hydrogen technology company. We have two uh, core business units. The first business unit focuses on electrolysis. We use electricity and we separate water into its two basic uh, components, hydrogen and oxygen. The other business unit that Hydrogenx has is the fuel cell business unit. That business unit manufactures hydrogen fuel cells for a variety of markets. Fuel cells take hydrogen as a fuel and produce electricity. For me, it's a bit of a passion. I love what I'm doing. I, I can see the benefit and I can see where it's going. Well, I think it started sort of way back. Uh, and this is going back to grade six where I uh, did a science fair project on electrolysis. The company was started in 1995. At uh, that time, we had a vision that we wanted to get into hydrogen and fuel cells and develop products. One of the first products though that we focused on back then uh, was test equipment for the up-and-coming fuel cell industries. A fuel cell is very similar to a battery. It is an electrochemical device, uh, but it shares similarities to the internal combustion engine in that you have a fuel tank. Uh, so hydrogen is in a tank, it's the fuel, and it gets delivered to the fuel cell, which is like a battery. At that point, the hydrogen and the oxygen in the air are able to react and uh, produce electricity. And the byproduct of this reaction is water and heat. So typical hydrogen fuel cell vehicles today get ranges in excess of 400 kilometers on a full tank of hydrogen. The other key advantage of a fuel cell vehicle is that you can refill that tank within minutes. Hydrogen costs about $8 per kilogram. So when you look at filling a fuel cell vehicle, five kilograms times eight is $40 to fill up your fuel cell vehicle. It's always been a sort of chicken and egg, the infrastructure company saying, we'll put the infrastructure when the vehicles come, the vehicle manufacturers saying, we can't place the vehicles until the infrastructure comes. Germany has stepped up, and in September of 2009, both the infrastructure companies and the automobile manufacturers came together, signed a memorandum of understanding saying that the automobile manufacturers uh, are committing to release hundreds of thousands of vehicles in Germany, fuel cell vehicles, and the infrastructure companies are saying we're committing to install the infrastructure that will be required for 2015 for the release of the vehicles. Hydrogenix has also developed a fuel cell battery hybrid midibus as part of a program sponsored by the European community and the German state of North Rhine-Westphalia. The buses have been running with early technology and it's been performing uh, beyond expectation. In terms of infrastructure, you install one fueling station in the city and all the buses go back to that fueling station to refill. So zero emissions. The uh, autonomy of the bus ranges from 250 kilometers to 400 kilometers for the bus, which is more than enough for an urban transit cycle. And again, we're continuing to see more and more interest as transit authorities sort of explore next steps in the greening of their fleet. We're supplying fuel cells uh, for backup power. In backup power, typically you're backing up using lead-acid batteries and a diesel genset. And the fuel cell has the ability to replace both the lead-acid batteries and the diesel genset. Advantages over batteries, uh, batteries need to be trickle charged, uh, they need to be conditioned every so often. The advantage of the fuel cell and hydrogen is when the fuel cell is off, it's off. We're working with uh, Germany's DLR. Uh, DLR is uh, the equivalent of Germany's NASA and we've uh, landed a contract to deliver fuel cells that will be used in powering uh, a sailplane that will cross the Atlantic uh, sometime in 2012. In light mobility, we're working with forklift OEMs, again, bringing the fuel cell technology. We're not a forklift manufacturer. We will target and work with an OEM to introduce the technology and move from prototype to first deployment to first fleet deployment. That's been our approach uh, in the bus market, in the forklift market, in the backup power market. One of the biggest challenges is making sure, you know, both government and public understand the value of this technology, certainly in North America. Uh, so that the support and planning for the technology continues. It's very important that this technology, certainly in the next couple of years, uh, gets adopted in, in a large way. We need to move from 
from lab to early manufacturing into some fairly large-scale manufacturing. And so it's important that some of these uh, markets begin to open up and that fuel cells become competitive with incumbent technologies. I think we're there, but it's always a question of timing. One year more, one year less can be very important in an early-stage technology company. The U.S. has some pretty uh, attractive uh, tax credits for companies that deploy fuel cell technology in backup. Uh, and that will be a fairly large driver for volume in 2011 in North America. We have a technology roadmap that uh, we can absolutely see clearly where we need to be and what we need to do to get there. And that's what we're working on every day. Today, because we have both uh, performance, durability and cost, we're beginning to open up and enter, enter markets. It's taken that long for the technology to sort of mature, but I think we're, we're finally there.